everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation. In today's video, we are gonna discuss the sweep leg for the discus, and we're gonna compare four throwers. We're gonna look at two advanced high school throwers that were doing very similar things. These are athletes who came in to train with me, and we were noticing certain thought process. We were trying to break things down, looking at their chain reaction, and finding what pillar issues needed to be addressed. So here on the left, we have Peyton, and on the right, we have Wyatt, and the two have very similar PRs, both as juniors through about 174 feet. Funnily enough, they were making very similar mistakes with their regard to how they thought about the sweep. So when we take the sweep leg nice and wide and around, you're gonna notice that you're gonna see your throwers that the more the sweep leg is kind of takes this wide path, it's gonna be able to turn and be able to take the throw out into the throw. So now there's a number of other things that are going on right here where we would look at our pillar one and our pillar two, but we're gonna look at how that sets up the sweep leg. Now you're gonna notice historically, Jason, if you see how I, I didn't draw the lines on Nate real well, but you're gonna see how both of these guys rotate through. Jason tends to come off of this too high and Nate's not coming around here. So where does the sweep leg play into that motion? Now, one of the things is you're gonna notice that when you look at Nate, his foot is actually turned out, so he's got the hip in, and Jason's a little too far forward, and the knee is rolling into the throw, and that is going to like make him cut around just a little bit. Now, both these guys are trying to move from their sweep to their rewrap, but the thing that we wanna pay attention to is where is the path? Is it nice and wide? And do we lead with the inside of the thigh? Do we lead with the foot? Do we think about the leg? Those are all cues that are gonna have an impact in the actual motion of the throw, and it's something that varies per the athlete. Peyton over here, you're gonna watch how Peyton kinda of comes in, and you're gonna notice this kind of, see how he's kind of coming around, he's trying to wrap, and you're gonna notice this little settle where the foot's not rotating, but his knee's trying to go. It was kind of coming in and cutting. So he had kind of more of a round cut, and then it kind of was doing this kind of a motion that Jason will keep his leg pretty rotational. So you're gonna notice how, because of the sweep leg path going out the right way and not prematurely like, we call it a hip crank where you just kind of crank the hip in. That's what you don't want to do. You want the sweep leg to come out. So when we look here, we call that pillar three and you're gonna see Peyton here does a real nice job. He gets a good high point. He's got the discus in a good position and you can see right there that he's actually getting that discus back, but he's starting to initiate the upper body too much. And that again is a little bit having to do with that path right here. So look where the foot's facing, down. Look at Jason, again, foot's facing a little low, but it's open a little bit more, and now he goes, when Peyton goes down, he kinda turns around, and that's what's causing this little bit of a foot crash, because he doesn't keep that rotation moving. Wyatt's doing something similar. You can see that he's thinking of having the leg almost too straight, and then he winds up kind of in a similar thing where the shoulder's getting too active and he's pulling around, but he's got a pretty good position here. And this is after we had made some corrections, but you can see again, comes off of here, really high here. And you can see Nate, same thing. Now watch Nate, who's probably got the foot a little flexed and legs a little straight, but he's got the foot open. So both your throwers here have the foot a little wider, so you're not gonna see the crash like you saw where Peyton kind of had the knee collapse and when you see Jason kind of winding up, popping up because it's leading that sweep, isn't allowing him to move into his finish the most optimally either. So when you look here, you see right here, you see that Wyatt's got the leg out, but you see how the arm is a little too open and you see Nate over here, you see how he's controlling how the arm opens and then, but he's keeping that sweep leg again longer and wider and you're seeing the knee more of kind of again in that nice rotating path. So here's the point of what we wanna look at when we're looking at the sweep. You wanna understand that the throw is in fact our chain reaction. We're looking at how do we train the specific movement. That's what we break down step by step inside the system, how we're gonna go, what are the different cues that may work for different athletes, but finding out what the athlete is doing in the thought process so that we can kind of help shape what kind of proper motion sequence they need to think of to create the best and most optimal movement is what you wanna focus on. So your sweep sets up your big finish. 
the big wide rotational path creates a better rotational path in the middle of the circle and that's why the sweep leg position is so critical and if you'd like to learn more about how to break down that sweep leg step by step we'll have trainings and we have everything that we go through our pillar three which is how do we sprint and how do we create that sweep leg we have a lot of things going on on that phase of the throw and we break it down step by step inside the throwing chain reaction system so thanks so much for watching hopefully today's video gives you a little bit of insight on how to kind of think about your sweep see some different examples and notice how those small details make a huge difference so thanks so much for watching be sure to comment like give us a thumbs up and we will hopefully see you on the next video